Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Lush Foliage. In today's video, I wanted to talk about another beautiful flowering plant called as the Blue Days. It's also called as the Draw of Brazilian Morning Glory uh, because it does belong to the family of Morning Glory. Uh, but the flowers are going to be very very small as compared to what a morning glory tends to have I'll put up the scientific name on the screen so you'll get a fair idea and the family of this plant now guys this is a very tough flowering plant uh, if you are a beginner you're looking out for a plant that tends to uh, flower profusely with this beautiful blue flowers then this is one of the plant you can add in your collection you will easily find it in any of the local nursery at a very cheap rate it's not a very expensive plant but there are certain things that you need to keep in mind in order to keep this plant. Now, another thing, these flowers will not stay throughout the day. They start to bloom early morning and they start to close by afternoon. It's already afternoon now. You can see the flowers are starting to close inwards. And that's how it is because, again, probably they are from the morning glory family. That's how our morning glory flowers also tend to do. So that is also the same thing with this plant. We have so many colors in flowers, but I feel that blue has a very special place. Uh, because they look absolutely beautiful very attractive i'm very fond of blue colored flowers that's why i also have a blue cluster wine both of them guys have the same flower shape i'll put up the image on the screen or the clip on the screen you will be able to get a fair idea both of them have the same flower type i was confused initially but then i realized there is a major difference uh, because the blue cluster wine as it says the name wine it is a climbing plant whereas our blue days is not a climbing plant this is more like a ground cover basically it is going to grow on the ground it will grow like a carpet or it is going to grow like a bush but it is not going to climb or creep onto anything if you have a, a rod or if you if you have a wire thread or a pole it is not going to climb onto it basically it is going to spread everywhere so now let's talk a little bit in detail about the care now this plant is a flowering plant so you cannot afford to keep it in shade it requires a good amount of morning direct sunlight for five to six hours even seven hours eight hours it's absolutely okay but it requires a good amount of sunlight in order for the flowers to come up if you're going to keep it in indirect bright light the plant will do well but the rate of flowers are going to be very less now the only reason why we tend to buy flowering plants is to have a good amount of flowers so hence keep it in a good amount of morning direct sunlight at least for five to six hours then you are going to get a good amount of blooms now talking about the soil mix i have used a soil with around 10 to 20 percent of coco peat and rest is garden soil and sand because these plants prefer a slight amount of moisture but not soggy wet soil ensure your pot has a drain hole so that the excess water can drain out if the water is going to stay in the pot this plant can easily get uh, rotted it will easily get overwatered, and the roots will get rotted so you have to be extremely careful talking about watering uh, whenever you see around two to three inches of the upper layer of soil is dry you can go ahead and do a watering as i said they prefer a slight even moisture in the soil but not soggy wet soil now this plant can even get away with underwatering. but again guys when i say underwatering, it doesn't mean that you're not going to water this plant for weeks you have to check on the plant but if you tend to forget let's say you tend to forget to water this plant probably one or two days it's absolutely okay this plant can handle slight amount of underwatering, but not excessively so ensure that you're keeping this in mind do a balanced watering if you want to have a healthy plant now talking about the fertilizers and uh, the blooming season uh, ideally in my city this plant tends to bloom throughout the year even during winters but ideally in a lot of locations uh, the flowers will start to bloom from summer until winters or for some people who are from a place wherein they experience snowfall then it is going to be from spring until the first frost after that most probably if you're going to keep this plant out it might get rotted in frost so uh, a lot of people tend to grow this as annuals but in my city uh, this plant is grown as a perennial it tends to bloom throughout the year and it keeps growing probably during winters it's going to slow down its growth and the amount of flowers are going to be quite less because i did have this plant earlier and it even survived during the winters the flowers were a little less but it did bloom even during the winters now talking about fertilizers please do not add fertilizers during uh, the winters 
you can add it during the spring until the first frost or from summer until winters because that's when the plant is in its full bloom you can go with any organic solution you can go with any organic fertilizer uh, that you have been using uh, the more you are going to give uh, fertility to the soil the more blooms will come again guys do not add too much of fertilizers uh, you can give a balanced fertilizer you can go with a wormy compost compost uh, NPK you can do that probably once in a uh, four weeks or once a month depending upon how fast your plant is growing now ideally I haven't seen any pest issues with this plant at times you might see aphids coming and attacking this plant when there are new buds coming uh, you can go with any organic solution uh, mealy bugs I haven't seen them the plant might get affected with powdery mildew especially when there is a transition between winter to summer that period is when powdery mildew is in its active growing period so if you happen to see that uh, you can go with any organic solution that you have been using or you can use two to three drops of raw milk in in, uh, half a cup of water and spray it on the leaves uh, the raw milk tends to work out really well for powdery mildew it tends to kill the uh, fungus very well apart from that you can also use some cinnamon powder on the upper layer of soil that is going to work out really well propagation is pretty simple of this plant you can do a stem cutting put it into the soil and then cover it up with a plastic bag within a month or so the roots will start to appear but do this during uh, the summers or during the monsoon season it is going to be much better it is the same process how i had done the stem cutting for uh, the blue cluster wine i had taken a cutting from the roadside and it is doing quite well the same way you can do a stem cutting that is one of the best method to propagate this plant or if your plant is really huge you can take out the plant and do a root division as well it tends to put out a lot of new offshoots so it also has roots you can try that also but stem cutting is one of the best methods you can uh, go with because at times the plant will get very bushy so in case if you want to do a little bit of pruning after you're done with the pruning take those stems and put it back into the soil you will get a new plant so guys that's all about it it's a pretty simple to grow plant it's a very tough plant if you're looking out for a very beautiful colored plant let's say a lot of us we already have reds yellows orange white pink in our garden but a lot of times blue is the color that is very rare so if you are looking out for a new color then uh, the blue days is one of the plant you can add in your collection so guys that's all about it i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep planting